All right. <laughs> Welcome back, Metal Guitar Academy students, for Volume 8 of the Metal Mailing, the Mighty and Monthly Metal Mailing. I am, of course, Brett Miller. And here we go. So the Wicked Warm-Up for this volume, for this month, Project Grudge, and this is all about stretching. This is not anything complicated, but uh, it's all about stretching, and I'm going to show it to you where it's written first, but then we're going to move it back as a challenge, okay? Uh, any kind of a stretching thing, just kind of work it back one fret at a time is, is a good challenge. So pretty much a good way to think about this, as I've outlined on the sheet itself, on the PDF, is if you think about your first finger and your pinky kind of always being on the same fret, in this case, it's 9th fret, 14th fret. Thumb low, of course. Hey, listen, my thumb's up here. There's no way in heck I'm going to be getting a good stretch. So you got to just, again, let that wrist kind of drape down here a little bit, right? Nothing ridiculous like that. But if your thumb's up here, you know, your wrist is going to be straighter. If you let your thumb just slide down a little bit, wrist is going to drape. So I sometimes have people just think, hey, there's a little string wrapped around your wrist or something if someone was to pull on it you know you just see i should have been a should have been a pantomime i guess the hell with this music stuff right so for any kind of big stretch that's really where you want your thumb to be it's just going to physically help your fingers stretch so ninth fret 14th fret sort of the bookends here okay? and we're just going to alternate middle finger and ring finger Middle finger is going to be on the 11th fret, ring finger on 12. And we just do each one twice, slowly. And I, you know, if you want to alternate pick this, down pick it, whatever. It really doesn't matter. Not really a right hand thing. So. Now A string, ring finger. Back to middle. Back to rain. That's cool. It really reminds me of like a kind of like a dime bag, Daryl. Kind of a lick. I don't know. It's fun. And then back to kind of have fun with this stuff, right? Now, I'm just going to attempt to bring this back, I don't know, all the way to like 5th fret here. So it's the exact same idea, okay, this time I'm going to be doing 5 and 10 and alternating these two fingers, okay. Quite a bit more of a stretch here, ring finger, middle, ring, there's that dime bag. Kind of lick again. And I don't know, let's go crazy here. Number two, wow, that's quite a bit of a stretch, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, we don't want to overdo it. But just to show you, it is possible to do these things. My thumb is very low. You know, my thumb, as you can tell, kind of way down here. Okay. So there it is, there's Project Rudge. Anything like that, again, don't overdo it, you know. You probably don't want to do what I did where you just leap down by like three or four frets. It's a good idea just to move it down one at a time until you find a place where really you feel like, okay, this is, you know, this is where I should be for my own ability level and my own stretchability here. Now, the Fire and Steel, this is a lick based on the E minor scale, okay? E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E. And this is a repetitive lick, okay? This is going to be the same exact lick pretty much in uh, three different octaves here, okay? It's going to be starting there, there, and there. Three different octaves. Um, so again, this is great for an exercise. I don't know. 
there's a lot of maybe shred dudes that play these types of licks a lot in their solos uh, when they're writing their fancy schmancy licks. And they can sound really cool, but we don't want to overdo. We, we don't want to sound too pattern-ish when we play. This is, you know, just my, my own thoughts here. Musically, we don't want to be too predictable, but these are very good for, uh, for exercises. Okay? And the idea is, this is legato, only one pick per string. That's the whole lick. A little slide. As we play this, I mentioned this before, but I'm going to mention it again. When you do pull-offs, you really want to have all three of these fingers here down. Notice I'm pressing them. First finger and ring finger stay, pinky stays. I'm now set to go. The biggest problem people have with pull-offs is they'll go to do a pull-off and like the fingers won't be down. And so it's inefficient, they get a, a pretty nasty sound with it. So you'll notice as I'm doing this, whatever notes I'm going to pull off, see I'm pulling off the first finger, that means it's there already, right? I have my pinky down, I'm going to pull to that. I'm not moving that first finger, it's there. Not moving the ring finger, it's there. Now, ready to go. Right? So that's important, this first one. Now here, I mentioned this in a lot of the technique stuff. I'm sure it's in the beginning method book, Beginner Guitar No Wimps. It's in the Unleash Your Speed 2.0. When you're talking about legato, as you're moving to the next string, notice I'm going to drop those two fingers. I'm going to drop my middle and my pinky at the same time. Why? Because, again, there it is ready to pull off. Okay, so, drop. That can be a great place to practice. Bam, until you work that out. This follows just a split second later. Now, again, they're all down. Slide. Use the momentum of your slide, we're not going to repick. Hammer pull. That's really the mechanics here. Starts again, wham! Here's another little detail. Notice since we're going on the, the 12th fret here, and the first finger ends up on 10 before that, you really have to kind of almost do a little launch, boom! As I'm landing my pinky, my first finger, boom, is moving back here at the same time. It's probably one of the trickier parts here. For this lick, bam, slide, bam, same thing there, not quite as much of a jump, but notice I'm landing my pinky on the 10th fret, wham, pretty much almost at the same time. It's not simultaneous because we don't want to cut off the previous note, but it's pretty darn quick. Boom, two, wham. Two drop, boom. I like what I'm doing here. Sorry. I try a little bit fast now. See if I can think of what I'm doing here. Not bad. Hardest thing about this thing is thinking ahead. Uh, I'm always trying to think ahead to my next string when I'm playing at a fast pace like that. Oopsie, I slid in the wrong place there. I find when I was looking at this for a couple minutes before doing the video here, that, that that is where I would screw it up if I made a mistake. I would want to slide before I got to my next string. So that's what I tend to think ahead about. I'm just thinking generally, nope, go to that next string. Like that. I also hit the wrong note there, but... Did it again. There you go. Taking head like that, working out the bugs. Oh. You know, you probably notice in these videos, as I mentioned before, I don't, I'm not practicing these a ton before I come on to do them. Uh, it's just frankly, a time thing. And I do like to think more about the explanation. I mean, as I mentioned, I don't care about 
whether I'm flawlessly you know, performing it here to try and impress you guys or whatever. It's more about the explanation, right? But I think it is fine to watch me make some mistakes too because that's, that's life. You know, when you're learning something like this, you shouldn't expect that you're going to get it 100% at the speed you want to get it at. It's, you know, it, it is important to push your tempo. I've talked about being on the edge, which is, you know, it's not so fast that somehow I can't notice if I made the mistake, right? I'm noticing exactly where I'm screwing it up. And that's important. You don't want to tamp down your tempo just to try and make it perfect if your goal is to make something faster, right? So one more time. Not bad. So check out those details as you do this. And I will see you next time for volume nine. All right, guys, keep shredding.